What can be so frustrating is cast netting and trying to locate shad when you can't find any and you go to three, four different spots and they're not in your normal spot. A lot of times this happens at changes of seasons, the water temperature and different things like that. So what we started doing is when we were catching a lot of shad when we were cast netting, we started to freeze the majority of those. So this is our method on how we freeze our shad uh, to try and keep them as fresh as we can when we go to use them. And hopefully this helps some of you guys. I know that it can be frustrating for bank fishermen and boaters as well when cast netting. So um, hope this video helps. So guys, once you got your fish, the ones that you, the ones that die that don't make it back, or the shad, pretty much all of them die. You're gonna want to freeze them as soon as you can before they start decomposing and breaking down. I always like to salt mine, get some kosher salt. It's pretty cheap. I think this was like two, three bucks from Costco, something like that. Salt also, what it does is it lowers the melting temperature. So when you stick it in the freezer, it stays frozen a lot longer when you take it out. That was pretty cool. I did, we noticed that on this over the summertime, I believe. Which is nice. It is nice when you're out in the summer and you got mm -hmm. some frozen shad and it just stays hard a little longer. These ones are not pre-made, so you got to make them. Um, so you just basically put it in there, give it a seal on one side, and then we figure out how many shad and how uh, we're going to put in that one bag and how big they are to kind of decide how big we want the bag. The shad bin. We're all interested in the shad tonight. Kitty, does it? Does Kitty like it? She's she's like, hmm, what is this? The paper towel to help dry them out. For me, the reason why I do it is is for when I'm sealing it, all the moisture is just sucked out, and it was it was actually affecting the way it sealed because uh, all the, it was bringing basically water and moisture up to the top where it's supposed to seal it. Some people take the shad or whatever they catch and they put it in the Ziploc and fill it with water and freeze it with the water. I think I tried that once jump. and I didn't like it. No, I don't like it either. We usually don't have shad for very long, so there's no, no reason to fill it with a bag with water for me. Because we're probably using shad that have been frozen maybe two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month at the most. You don't want a lot of moisture on the outside of their scales. They already got their slime coat. When you add all that water, the salt just runs off and it's kind of a waste. So we'll just salt them on one side like this. They can go pretty heavy. I do go a little heavy, but you know what? Doing it for thousands of years. <laughs> have you? People have. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing. Now, you can see that it's wet on the underside, so this first batch, um, the under layer might wipe off a little bit of the salt, but it, the salt coats the bottom of the paper towel. With these shad being um, smaller, I mean for us they're a little bit smaller, probably what we'll do is we'll put three in a bag, because um, one of these shad could be about two baits, and two, four, six, that's six baits, that's, and we each carry three poles. So that'd be one, one round of baits for each of us. Mm -hmm. um, or if we're out by ourselves, you know. It makes for good, so you don't want to package them all individually, but you also don't want to package them all in one bag because you want to be able to take as many as you need for that fishing trip. If it's just you. You don't want to have to come back and refreeze them. Yeah, you don't, they don't do well like bringing them back um, from a trip, even if you're only out a few hours and then refreezing them, so. And um, these will go in perfectly diagonally, so like that. And these, yeah, these, these are perfect size for, for this bag. Uh, yeah. It's cut. And the main thing, you got to be careful about when putting these shad in there is getting the salt at the very tip here where it seals where it seals yeah it needs it needs a good seal and that salt really screws it up sometime i 
I put them in always facing the opposite direction of each other. This right here is kind of the way the bag should be. These three sitting here. Yep. They just, just work, like work better like that. So this bag's good. It's ready to be sealed. And so, so, so even if you go fishing by yourself, like that, that'd be kind of perfect to go out. I, I, like you get a couple hours, just grab one of these. You're not wasting any from your frozen. Mm -hmm. I but, always run my fingers along the lip of the bag where it seals. And then give it a good seal. Now, I've been using this here vacuum sealer for a little while, so it's got some unique features where I have to actually push it down a little bit for it to seal right now. Are you, oh, while you're sealing? Yeah, and so what I do is I put it on moist mode, for mine at least. This is a food saver. Moist. It understands it's softer and has more moisture. And it sucks out all of the moisture. Well, not all of it. Obviously, there's a lot within the fish. But it, it gets that salt right along their scales and their skin there. It kind of preserves it, in my opinion, a little bit better. Obviously, salt's a preserver. But. And it's automatically sealing it right now. Yeah, it, it auto-seals it. And then when the light's off, like that, it is done. You have a fresh bag of shad that is vacuum sealed right there. What I always do, just so I know, because I've always got multiple bags in my freezer. This is good stuff, I guys. date it. So today is April the 2nd, 23rd, 2023. That is very smart. So... Yeah, so we know we caught them and froze them today on that date and yeah yeah start start using up the bait that's the oldest so that you're not you're not stuck with a whole bunch of old bait and this this fits perfectly in a little backpack a little pou pouch of some sort you could fit this in a little what do you call those fanny packs, oh, fanny pack, fanny, <laughs> fanny pack those are back fishing. in style out here <laughs> um, um, but i mean you can see the blood actually like it's starting to seep out of the fish a little bit. That's actually, kind of cool. I've never seen that. That's pretty crazy. That's a really, that's a really tight seal. It's perfect when you cut them up because they're nice and intact. This worked just fine. It's, it's pretty cheap. You go to Costco, it's cheap stuff. Why not? Okay. We're going to do the same thing here. Be nice if uh, someone would invent a little bag opener. You can just keep them open. Uh, one other thing I do is I always try to make their, if I can, make their tails spread out and not be so pushed together. And that green little tray just is a moisture tray. Yeah, you kind of want your bag opening to be kind of in the middle of that green. See right here, the blood's already seeping out. And that little earlobe or whatever you want to yep. call it. So I mean, it's all in the bag right yeah. here. That's that's tight. I like it. Yep, it's good to, it's good to go. And, and knowing us, we'll probably use this within a week, week and a half. Yeah, it gets used pretty quickly. Unless we have other shad in the freezer. Or unless we go get some fresh shad. So fresh shad is, fresh shad means we're probably going to, if we want to go fishing at all, we're going to use it that day. Yeah. So guys, that is the process of how to freeze your shad. Just pat them dry on one side. Get your salt. See how that leftover salt can be reused. Yeah, let's, let's put some more. And then seal them up.